A large object with a turquoise mm. hue plummeted out of the sky earlier this summer and plowed into the earth south of Las Vegas, somewhere near Needles, California. Yeah, eyewitnesses say this was uh, no meteorite, especially since a bunch of helicopters came looking for it and then hauled it away. I-Team Chief Investigator George Knapp has been talking to the people who saw this thing, and he's here now with the story. Got a fun little mystery on our hands mm -hmm. here. The object was seen in the early morning hours of May 14th. It appeared to crash into the ground just west of the Colorado River, and that's when things got interesting for residents of that area. Somewhere in this rough terrain, just west of the Colorado River and south of Needles, is a point of impact, maybe some burn marks, created by something that fell from the sky. Is, Frank Costigan saw it because, it because he got up at 3 in the morning to let his cat out, a fiery object that flashed across the sky. But it wasn't a meteor, he says. Up in the sky, it was just bright. It lit... It, it was bright enough that it illuminated the ground. For seven years, Costigan worked as the chief of airport security at LAX. He says the mystery object flew out of the northeast heading southwest, traveling very fast. But at one point, it slowed down, then sped up again. And it went behind a hill, and I waited to see if I could hear it crash, because as big as it was, it was bound to make noise. But he didn't hear a crash. I was coming into work. Hours later, David work. Hayes, the owner of KTOX Radio in Needles, well, was coming to work when he spotted an odd formation of dark road. vehicles driving this off the highway. He drew a picture black. of the lead vehicle, a oh, large black, truck with a dome black. on top and a black structure that's that's that reminded him of a like stealth that. fighter. It seemed like it was some kind of surveillance vehicle, uh, but four-wheel drive, and it had uh, government plates, the U.S. government plates on it, and behind it was uh, a, a couple of vans that were, uh, they looked like support vehicles. The man Eight inside years. had military uh, bearings, Hayes said, but no, weren't in uniform. He made eye contact with one of the drivers and the guy followed him. Later in the day, one of the vehicles was parked outside his station, seemingly conducting a surveillance of the place. You see these guys and they're staring you down. It's sort of a men in black sort of a feel to it. Absolutely. A uh, very serious uh, heart, uh, you know, serious as a heart attack. I went up to the airport. Coincidentally, after, uh, Costigan, the ex-cop, works on investigations for Hayes. When he came into the radio station, he told Hayes about the thing he'd seen in the sky. And Hayes told him about the men in black. Then they got another piece of the puzzle, a call from a man who lives in a houseboat on the river who said he saw the fiery object, that it had crashed about 100 yards west of the river, that it landed with a thump. Hayes says he's known the witness for years by the name Bob on the River. Bob thought a plane had crashed and tried to call 911, but his cell wouldn't work, so he moved his boat out into the river and then heard the helicopters. In an interview with journalist Linda Howe, Bob says he saw at least five helicopters flying in formation, including a large sky crane. The crane picked up the oval-shaped object, still glowing, and flew away, heading in the direction of Las Vegas. One odd detail, the choppers arrived only 17 minutes after the object crashed. Bob described it to Hayes. About the size of a, he said it was like a, the size of a semi-trailer, about like a, a oblong shape thing, and uh, like a, you know, like a tank, something like that. There's got to be something, on the, some evidence on the ground. There's Out of the blue, the people at the station got a call from a friend in Laughlin who said the Laughlin airport had been inundated on the night of the crash with so-called Janet planes. That's the airline that flies workers to top-secret Area 51. Costigan says the airport could not confirm this because no one's on duty after 6 p.m. at night, not even in the tower. The black vehicles have left needles. Bob, the houseboat guy, can't be found either. The fact that there were people here the next day, almost like a team, it seemed like, that they were doing either some sort of uh, cleanup or uh, whatever. The point is, is that something definitely happened. We phoned nearly every agency we could think of to see if they had received any report or knew anything, and not surprisingly, none of them seemed to know anything. We, they're aware of it, they just don't have any specific information. Here's the list of those we called. I mean, police agencies in three states, we called the Laughlin Airport, the National Weather Service, the FAA, several military bases, including uh, Nellis. A military watchdog group found a public record showing there was at least one Army helicopter in the area, in that area at the time. That helicopter, oddly enough, is listed as being attached 
to a U.S. base in Europe. So, you know, the question is, what the heck's it doing here? We're following freedom of information requests, and we're going to report back when we get some responses. We have some links on our website where you can learn more about this case, plus an oldie but goodie, a video report we aired about eight years ago about another weird crash here in Nevada. We're just getting started on this thing. Oh, right. I, we've good we've got some you. good links. I think we're going to get some answers on this thing, so. and we'll, and we'll come back can. with more. You yeah. can. The intriguing. Thank you, George. Sure. Thanks, George. Well, floodwaters are doing some pretty major damage.